here we have the Royal Victoria Hospital, the great medical and surgical centre for Ulster's population of a million and a quarter people. It serves the employees of the Port of Belfast as it does the employees of our great shipyards. Its patients also come from our spinning mills, from our weaving factories, and from the farming community throughout the province. From our working class district and from our residential districts. Conveniently situated in Belfast, some 20% of its inpatients are drawn from other districts throughout the province. 6,500 inpatients are annually received. In the Royal Victoria Hospital, we have a highly developed institution supplying in an efficient manner all that scientific medicine offers for diagnosis and treatment, all that the art of surgery accomplishes by way of operation. This film, while necessarily short, will, it is hoped, provide an enduring mental picture of the everyday life of the hospital. Each day, some 400 men, women and children attend at the outpatients department for treatment and advice. In this department alone, 46,000 new cases are dealt with annually. The dressing room is seldom, if ever, idle and is never lacking in variety. It may be the injured hand of the engineer or the injured leg of the mill worker. The massage department plays a prominent part in a modern hospital. This patient, in the throes of rheumatism, is having the assistance of massage in combating her painful malady. The costly and complicated X-ray apparatus renders an essential service to medical and surgical science. Prolonged exposure to its rays is dangerous to the operator, who has to be protected by a lead-lined partition with specially prepared windows. Radium, now so important in the treatment of cancer, makes exacting demands on the finances of our hospital. This safe contains radium needles to a total value of £5,000, while this one needle itself costs £50. Dentistry is today recognised as imperative in maintaining public health, and the Royal Victoria Hospital makes its just contribution in providing up-to-date dental surgery. An industrial community is deprived of much of the sunlight that is the gratuitous gift of nature. Science has intervened, however, and this patient is receiving her share by artificial means. Next, we reach the main entrance of the casualty department where an accident case is being admitted. Our patient is examined in the casualty room, but as is often the case, the trouble lies hidden from the human eye. And the nature of the injuries has to be ascertained by means of photographic X-ray. A compound fracture is revealed. Without delay, the operation theatre is warned. The surgeons wash their hands with scrupulous care, don their muslin masks and their rubber gloves. The use of sterilizers ensures hygienic conditions. Soon everything is ready and the patient is brought in. The operation is performed with all the consummate skill of modern surgery and entirely without pain. After the operation, the patient is returned to the ward where he receives everything that expert nursing and kindly care can offer until he is able to leave the hospital. The overhead fitting, known as the gantry, is used to keep rigid the fractured limb. The patient's environments are such as to promote speedy recovery. Leaving the ward and entering the main corridor, we meet some of our nurses returning to duty. Visiting day is always eagerly anticipated, and our hospital is justly proud to welcome all visitors. And so we leave the Royal Victoria Hospital with our patient, now quite recovered and ready to begin life again. And now I will introduce the Chairman of the Board of Management. Our picture tells 
a little of the work of our great hospital. It cannot tell the anguish and misery hidden behind a long waiting list. A young mother, pale, weak, weary, comes to the hospital. After careful examination, the doctor tells her, do not worry, you will get quite well, but you must come into hospital for a slight operation. Well, thank you, sir. When can I come? I am very sorry. Our beds are quite full. I shall put your name on the waiting list. Oh, sir, I cannot carry on any longer. I cannot take care of my home and my little children. The same tale is repeated in each department every day. Is the whole thing not a tragedy? It might have been you, or it might have been someone very dear to you. I earnestly appeal for generous help for the provision of additional beds.